So how did you initially become interested in water conservation? I came, became interested not so much in water conservation but in water when water was included as a tradable good in the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement and then in the North American Free Trade Agreement. And I asked myself, if there's all this water in the world, how come it's a tradable good in a trade agreement? Why? What? What? what what's up? And the more research I did, the more I realized that the world was running out of fresh, clean water. I mean, the water's still on the planet some, somewhere, but we're polluting it, displacing it, mismanaging it. And, and therefore, interests were starting to come in and take control of it. And I could, I could smell it. I could see it happening before other people, I guess, maybe, in some ways. Um, what are the implications of Canada possessing such a large amount of the world's fresh water? So, um, I, I think we grew up with this, with this myth that we could do whatever we wanted, that we didn't have to take care of it. So even though we think we love it, and we think it's in our... It's in our uh, mythology and in our music and our stories and so on. We really don't have good law around water. We have not mapped our groundwater. We don't know where it is or how, much, how sustainable it is. We've allowed far too much access to it and we pollute far too much. So I'm hoping that with time and not too much time we're going to start to see that we need to be stewards of this gift, that this is a wonderful gift that we've been given and that we have a responsibility. With the gift comes a responsibility. So. Um how can Canada optimize its freshwater supply? Well, I'd like to see us declare our water to be a common heritage and a public trust and really protect it from commercial exports. I'd like for us to, to take care of it. I think that with climate change and the climate refugees in the world, there are going to be people needing to come to places that still have water. And when I look at us destroying our water sources and I think about the need for that water to stay clean for future generations, it makes me crazy. Just that I don't think corporations or the private sector should be making the decisions about water. When they use water for the, the, the product that they make, um, it should be, they should be accountable to a public body so that they're not polluting it, they're not overusing it, they're using it in the most sustainable way possible. Well, there are many ways in which uh, private interests are commodifying, commodifying water, from utilities to bottled water to water markets to even buying up actual land with water under it to own for future times. And it's one. It, now these through in these international investment regimes, they're actually able to kind of skip over the law of the land or the the, the sovereign rights of a people and buy up the actual water which you could think is inconceivable, but when you, when you create water as a, uh, you, you, you turn it into a market, you make it a private property that can be op bought and sold on the open market, well then it's, it can be owned by somebody, an interest that doesn't even live in your country and isn't even a person or isn't even another country. It's just a big hedge fund that a whole bunch of na nameless people have just you know, put money into. So it's not even governed by any kind of humans who might be concerned about abusing somebody else's life source of water. So it becomes the worst of the market, that kind of dead hand of the market, absolutely unconnected to any responsibility. But we're seeing that happen really quickly, and I, I think it's a very disturbing new facet of this privatization. Listen, it is, uh, it, 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 it wakes me up at night. Why, why aren't people as upset, and our leaders as upset about this as I am? Um, so what can average Canadians and university students to conserve fresh water? Well, first thing is learn as much as you can. I had people come up to me tonight who said, I didn't know any of this and I really didn't. I grew up thinking of this abundance of water. So I think the first thing is to learn as much as you can. Go to places that are writing about it. Go to our website, Council of Canadians, Canadians.org, and learn about it. The Blue Planet Project is our international project. We've got all sorts of things around water, our national water problems, and amendment to the Fisheries Act where you can destroy healthy lakes and so on. So learn, learn, learn. Do whatever you can in your private life, in your home, with your family, your parents or your kids or whatever stage of life you're in. Converting lawns to something more water friendly, um, getting appliances that are low flow water from toilets to showers to washing machines and so on. Just think water. Don't water your driveway. Don't cool off your car with, you know, just think about it. Decide against bottled water. Take a pledge not to drink bottled water. It's a simple thing you can do. It's cheaper, it's safer water, the public water coming out of your tap. Work at your university to ban bottled water and to do education around the need for public water sources. And then get involved beyond that. If there's a privatization coming to your community, if your city council is deciding to 
um, move to a private company to deliver water, get involved. I mean, it can be as involved as you want, but start with teaching yourself and start with looking at water and understanding that it is the life source. It is the essential element of every, every ecosystem and we have to collectively leave it where it is, take care of it and not pollute it. Think what you're putting into the water when you put it in. Think what you're doing every time you use a harsh chemical that goes into that water supply, never to be gone. Thank you so much for My speaking pleasure. with us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Entirely. We can talk again soon. For sure. Okay. Thanks.